I got to refresh over here and mute this so I don't blow my eardrums and your eardrums out alike. All right, good. It's already muted. I'm retired. No work. Already from Ron down there. Hmm. All right, guys. We appreciate everybody coming in. This is one of my friends, and this is one of the first. We've already got 15 people in. Guys, make sure you go and share out. Let everybody know that we're going live. Let everybody know that we've got an elite pro, Mr. Brandon Card. Now, Brandon was one of the very first pros to come on Bass Geek Live. And uh, I think he was scared to death the first time I brought him on. He was kind of checking me out, making sure I was legit. I wasn't going to do something crazy like, you know, fish with lettuce or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, we had a real good time. Had a lot of guys on there. A lot of guys me and Brandon both know and share as friends. Uh, but uh, we appreciate everybody coming on. Uh as always, guys, we're going to try and do these every single Monday night. Now, you guys know I work swing shifts, so there's always that one Monday night when I'm at work, and if I do a live stream, they will fire me. So I don't do it that night. Sorry, I know you might want it, but you're not getting that one. Sorry, okay? You're going to have to make a lot of donations to get me to give you that one, okay? I'll do it. I mean, it's going to take a lot of donations. We'll do it live. I'll film me getting fired. For talking bass fishing all right yeah. <laughs> i'm just kidding that is a absolute joke all right we're already bumped up 42 man that thing keeps popping guys make sure you go down and give us a like in the uh well the like button thumbs up whatever you want to call it uh something that i don't know because i am gaining so many subscribers and i want to make sure that you guys know two bits of business and then we're gonna start talking pre no i'm lying post spawn bass fishing because uh you know that's uh that's tough we've all heard about the post spawn funk but uh you know that's not a band from the 70s it's uh, a tough section of fishing but <laughs> uh you know uh guys make sure you uh go and hit that sub button if you if you're not subbed make sure that you know we put out new videos every single sunday at 5 p.m eastern time and every wednesday at 5 p.m eastern time and we turn this live stream into a podcast which you can find wherever literally wherever from itunes to i don't even know all the google places to iheart radio uh, you know if there's an i fart radio it's possibly there too i don't know I don't know if it's like smell o vision or something out there. Who who knows? But, yeah, BA needs some fishing for, on Teleco Lake. He needs some advice. So we already got some locals in there, one of my buddies. Uh, we, we might talk. We might see if, if Brandon can throw you out some help on that lake. Uh, but anyway, I want to say thanks for Brandon. We're going to start, uh, hopefully, you know, Brandon's super busy. Uh He's how many is seven months, Brandon? Seven month old? Yeah, I got a got a seven month old baby boy. So uh, my yeah. wife Kelly and I have our hands full to say the least. And big shout out to Miss Kelly. She's awesome. Number one, we uh, we know behind every good man, there's a great woman. Mm -hmm. I'll have to say it that way because my wife will slap me as soon as I get off here. But Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so uh, we know she. She holds a lot of the fort down while uh, Brandon's out there having a good time fishing most of the time. And yeah. Same here. Same here with me. Yeah. My, wife, my wife does a lot for us in the background, too. So Brandon uh -huh. is uh, I'm a little mad at Brandon. I ain't going to lie. He left us. He went to greener pastures and bigger green bass. I know where he's at down there. And I can't say that I blame him. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, Brandon, Brandon, Brandon left the East Tennessee area. He moved down to North Kakalaki down there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I see him posting these big green fish. And I'm always like, I can't believe he ain't invited me down yet. I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of hurt. <laughs> but guys, Brandon, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, you know, how you got started into bass fishing, how you got uh, into the Elite Series and uh, 
you know, just just tell us a little bit. Of, who is Brandon Card, and uh, why does he fish? Yeah, well, you know, just uh, grew up on uh, Norse Lake, you know, there in East Tennessee, north mm -hmm. of Knoxville. Uh, went to school at Campbell County High School, and uh, you know, my brother and I, we were just eat up with fishing from a real early age. Uh, my mom and dad did a great job of just uh, taking us out and uh, letting us fish as much as we, you know, as we wanted to. Essentially, when we weren't we weren't in school, we weren't playing uh, basketball or running cross country. We were pretty much fishing. So uh, my brother's two years older than I am, and uh, you know, he loves bass fishing too. So. That's just, uh, that's what we did, you know, when we had any time. And so we just started uh, fishing tournaments when I was 14. My brother uh, bought a bass boat, actually, when he was 16. Um, he was uh, he was working at the local grocery store and just uh, paying on the boat. And uh, that's kind of what got us on the water uh, to be able to fish bass tournaments. And so we just started fishing local bass tournaments. And then we uh, kind of worked our way up and started fishing some DFLs and stuff like that. And then uh, when I graduated high school, I went to University of Kentucky and uh, fished for University of Kentucky bass fishing team for four years. And so uh, that was that was a great learning experience. I mean, college bass fishing has just exploded now. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I kind of got in on it at the ground level, uh, but I still learn, you know, a whole lot. And uh, and so then, you know, after college. I went to work and you know saved up some money started a landscape company and just uh just saved up some money for a couple years then i fished the bassmaster southern opens and was uh fortunate enough that first year to qualify for the elite series and so i've been fishing the bassmaster elite series uh, since 2012. that's awesome and and that's you know being a being a little older i don't want to date myself but i'm old being a little older you know i didn't have the chance to fish the uh you know, fish, you know, the college and the high school level stuff. And when you started the college stuff, now, did did they did they already have the high school level? Is that how you got into college or? No, they didn't. Uh, they started the high school after college. Uh, fishing had been around for a while, I think. Um, you know, of course, I started fishing collegiately and just trying to think. Uh, 2005. And so I fished from 2005 to 2009. I think by about the time I was getting out of college fishing, that's kind of when high school fishing started, essentially. Yeah. Um, and like you said, you know, since then, uh, it's really exploded. College fishing, high school fishing has exploded. I think at one point in time, uh, if not still, college uh, bass fishing was the fastest growing sport in the U.S. in, in college. And I think it is right now the fastest growing sport and uh high school sports so i believe it. that that says a lot and speaking of high school sports now you you still put on a you you still make the trip up here oh yeah uh, to uh to do a uh a, a high school tournament uh once or twice a year uh go ahead i know i know it's already happened this year right well actually it's it's the first saturday of december every there year we go. yeah so so we just we keep it that same same week and uh you know that's that's obviously on norse lake my home lake uh campbell county chamber of commerce they're a huge supporter of the event and so it's just it's just an awesome uh tournament where i can just kind of give back to the high school we, we actually have a high school and college it's, it's kind of two All tournaments right. in one so we, we we weigh the college kids in separate from the high school kids two separate payouts uh, but, but the neat thing about it is that, uh, pretty much everybody in my family helps out. And then all my close high school buddies help me run the event. So it's just, it's just kind of like a big old homecoming, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, for, for me and my buddies. And we just have a great time with it. It's a lot of fun. That is, that is awesome. So now tell me why you left me. Why'd you move to North Carolina? <laughs> well, the old, the old ball and chain wanted to get closer to, to her. Parents. Oh, is that where she's from? Oh, ball and chain. Dangerous what dangerous waters we're in right now. I'll tell yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's you know, all right. I call my wife the old lady all the time. People's like, she don't smack you for that. I'm like, she smacks me for so much other stuff. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Sorry. No, she, uh, she she grew up over here. Not necessarily. We live in Salisbury, which is right here on High Rock Lake. Mm -hmm. um, she she grew up a little bit from here, but her parents live like an hour away. And so, you know, just it just got her a lot closer to them. And then, you know, when I'm gone for weeks on end, you know, she has some support and help. And, That's awesome. Yeah. So her uh, her mom helps out a lot, you know, watching the baby and stuff. So as they say, it takes a village. You 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 never do anything alone. It's, uh, you know, from from your tournament to your kids. You know, it's it's all about having other people to help you out. That's uh, that's true in any walk of life. So, mm -hmm. so guys, we're going to talk about postpone now. I'll be honest with you, I'm burnt to pieces because I forgot to buy sunscreen today, and <laughs> I know bad, I'm bad. But uh, you know, we uh, we're going to get in. We're we're kind of in the spawn area, the smallmouth spawn, and where I'm at. And, uh, you know, uh, down where Brandon's at, I'm sure they are well in the postpone. Uh, postpone is a time when I get uh, frustrated. So, Brandon, just talk to us from a pro's perspective and, and somebody with much more time on the water than, than I have. You know, talk to us about, you know, once it's over, and they're finicky. What happens to those big females? Where do you think they go? What do you think they do? How do you think? And 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 how long does it take for them to recover? And how long after that are they catchable? Are they catchable immediately? What happens to those big females after they spawn? Well, you know, post spawns, uh, it's an interesting time of year because uh, you can do so much and you know catch them so many different ways and so in, in my mind that's kind of what makes the post spawn time of year uh that's probably my favorite time to fish i mean if you if you really look back, if you look back at the tournaments uh tournament successes that i've had i've had a lot of success in may and june hmm. and um i just really love this time of year because you know my two favorite techniques are are kind of they rise to the top and, and that's top water and then that's also offshore fishing. And yep. so when, when I can do one or the other, or maybe even do both, you know, I, I, I tend to have a pretty good event. So uh, so that's what I do in the post spawn time of year. You know, I start out looking for a top water bite. Obviously, everybody loves to own top water. Um, and so, if they don't, there is something wrong with them. Yeah, Either they never had a quality top water bite and don't <laughs> understand it. Or, you know, I don't know. There's, I'm going to question their mental stability. I'm pretty sure that any, <laughs> anybody that's, that's had a big bass in a top water plug, like that has to be their favorite, their favorite technique. It has to be. I yeah. literally got on a top water bite about two years ago. And I honestly, my wife called me and I thought I was going to have a heart attack. It was that good. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I can stand this. <laughs> I'm a fat old man and it's really, my heart is going crazy right now. <laughs> so, yeah, Sorry. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to look for. You know, there's, there's two different uh, bites happening in the post spawn on top. There's the the uh, fish that are feeding on shad and you know like that's the time of year when shad start spawning and so there's an early morning shad spawn bite um and so you know i like to key on those fish with the walking bait you know like my uh yozuri 3db pencil my favorite top water bait uh but then also there's the the brim start spawning this time of year too in the post spawn mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of bass that feed on brim, you know, when the brim are spawning. So, you know, that that's another, you know, great time for top water. You know, those fish, you, you seem to do a little bit better on buzz toads, buzz baits, prop baits, stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, you're, you're essentially throwing those baits back in the pockets where the bass were spawning. It's just now the, the bluegill are spawning there. Uh, but then, you know, for the fish feeding on the shad, you know, that's, that's usually closer, you know, more secondary points, main lake points. Um, in, in my mind, the shad spawn fish, they're a little bit further along. Mm -hmm. They're going to be heading to the ledges pretty soon. Um, you know, and I, it doesn't, 
it doesn't mean they're going to be on like deep, deep ledges. I mean, uh, you know, they, they may be on some shallow ledges, but, uh, you know, offshore. If yeah. you will. And, um, you know, then when it's offshore, that's, that's especially when they first move out there, that's probably my favorite time of year to catch them because I just love, love burning a big crankbait and just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, catching them one cast after the other, you know, getting a school fired up is just so much fun. Yeah. I, I think me and you've talked about this. I think, you know, I'm, I, that's me too. Now I love to throw a big crankbait, but I'm a big swim bait guy too. So I love to throw that big swim bait, a big underspin, man. I've been experimenting with some of those big Picasso, uh, one and a half, two ounce, uh, with a jerky J on it. Uh, yeah. uh, uh forget what they called shock yeah. blades. So yeah, blade, blade, uh, bladed style, uh, jig. I mean, big ones, you know, uh, you know, up on Douglas, you know, where I'm, I'm giving my stuff away. I've got to shut up. I don't know what I'm telling you people this for. Anyway, <laughs> but yeah, so so that's something we need to do. We need to hook up sometime and go shoot a video, do some of that stuff. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'll give it to Brandon. I, he's he's actually the guy that turned me on to a lot of Yoziri stuff. And, you know, you guys know that I talk about a lot of a lot of the baits with Yoziri, Yoziri too. Lord, I can't pronounce it, but. I know how to fish them. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, I want to give a couple of shout-outs back at some guys. Uh, what's up, Scott? He says hey to me and Brandon. Uh, Ron said hello. We appreciate you, Ron. Thanks for coming and stopping by. What's up, Mike? Uh, you know, Jesse's always hanging out with us. Guys, we are doing a giveaway tonight. We'll do it at the end. I'll show you here in a little bit of what we're going to give away. Uh, BA, my buddy down there catching those big strappers. He's the one asking about some tips for Teleco. <laughs> Don't fish it. That's my tip for Teleco right there. Don't Top water. It. <laughs> there you go. There you go. He now he knows more about it than I do. I don't get to fish down that way a little bit. Yeah, I'm yeah. really East Tennessee. I like I like loud and better because it just has more color in the water. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It seems like you could trick them a little bit easier on loud and teleco gets so clear it gets tough. But uh, definitely on a good cloudy day in post spawn, you can you can smash some smallmouth on some uh, some walking baits there. That's pretty cool. I I haven't fished teleco a lot. I fished loud a couple of times. Uh, big shout out to Gators. Shoot, excuse me. I went from water to a soda. Bad choice, but oh well. <laughs> um. But, uh, so, so, uh, tell us what it's like to be down there fishing, uh, fishing, uh, the, uh, heavy hitters, you know, where they have it down there around the Raleigh area, High Rock Lake and all those lakes down there. What's, what's the difference? You know, I love, uh, Norris. I'm a big fan of Norris. Now, what side of Norris did, did you really primarily fish? You fish the PAL side or you grow up fishing the, the creek uh, side? Oh, yeah, mostly, mostly the PAL side, but uh, but really like the lower end is, is where we cut our teeth. So just all gotcha. the creeks down there by the dam, you know, Cove Creek, Big Creek, um, and then working our way up the, the PAL, Cedar Creek area, you know, that's, that's kind of where we spend a lot of our time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. We, uh, Norse, man, Norse has changed so much. Um, really? Yeah. Just with the zebra mussels, you know, it's, it's so much clearer now. And yeah. The mouth are obviously feeding on our lives. And so yeah. it, it, it used to be, I mean, it's always been a clear lake, but it used to have yeah. kind, of a, kind of a greenish tint to it. You know, now it's just crystal clear. And yeah. so, uh, you know, we used to fish a lot shallower for the smallmouth. Mm -hmm. Now it seems like you just have to fish so deep. It's just, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's challenging. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Now, is, this is a big question. You know, we've talked about it a lot. I got to go out with uh, John Sokup a few, few weeks ago. Uh, on one of mine and your other home lakes, you know, Cherokee. And I got to really yeah. just sit back and watch and learn. Uh, so what are you thinking? What What's your opinion about that live, that forward facing sonar, man? What, what, I mean, it's crazy. It blew my mind. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, being a geek, a computer geek, I love technology, but I also felt like it kind of killed Santa Claus a little bit for me. <laughs> 
you know, I was like, wow. I was like, you know, I, I, when I was out there, I was like, gosh, this is great, man. I love this. I'm like, God, I can't wait to get my hands on it. You know, I'm kind of holding off uh, to get the live plush, you know, and uh, from, from Garmin. And uh, I know you're with Bird. And uh, I believe, right, I'm, I'm not even yeah, positive. Yeah, okay. I, I, was seeing, I was seeing that. You know, of course, they came out with theirs, and they updated it. That looks real good now. And uh, But at the same time, I was like, man, how, I mean, is it just that it's finding it faster, or do you think that it's, it's alleviated some of the real puzzle? Because I felt like, you know, now I can just pull up and kind of go, whoop, whoop. Nope, they're not here. I'm, I'm leaving. What do you think? What do you think? There's good and bad about everything. What do you think about it? How much have you got to personally use it? Because I haven't, I haven't got to see it. So, what's your opinion? Yeah. So, so last year uh, I used all three brands. Last year, I, uh, um, you know, I was Lorenz for years, and then last year I kind of went rogue and and bought all three, and I was experimenting with all of them, and then. Uh, kind of at the end of the season, I just thought, well, I could keep doing this or I could go with the company that I feel like um, suits my style the best. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying that, you know, hummingbirds for everybody, but for me, you know, it really just clicks with me. And, uh, you know, one, one of the things last year that I just noticed really elevated my game was the, the mega 360. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's no telling how many fish that I weighed in on the Elite Series strictly from the, the 360. I mean, it, I was just blown away. And I was kind of frustrated at myself that I didn't get it earlier. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, so for me, that really clicks with how, I, I guess, how my mind is, you know, how my mind works, how I like yeah. to fish. Um, so... Um, Obviously, you know, that's totally different than than the Mega Live and, the, yeah. you know, all the, the Garmin uh, pan optics and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I have been experimenting a lot with the Mega Live this year and I, I've caught a lot of fish on it. So, um, you know, even at like Lake Hartwell at the Classic, mm -hmm. I caught a lot of fish on Mega Live. So I feel like, you know, when you're fishing offshore, especially on some of those clear lakes like Hartwell, yeah. like Norris, Cherokee, you know, that's when the Mega Live and the forward shooting seminar is, is going to be, you know, the deal. Yeah. Uh, but for a lot of the other lakes that I fish, like Lake Fork, uh, even, you know, here on High Rock Lake, some of these dingier lakes where the fish don't get quite as deep mm -hmm. and the fish are more structure oriented, I don't think there's a better tool that you could put on your boat than a Mega 360 just for finding the structure, being able to line up and just make pinpoint cast, you know, whether that's brush piles offshore, you know, whether that's just like a little hard spot out on like a, just a big hump. Um, I mean, heck, even, even uh, the last tournament, uh, even though I didn't do any good at Chickamauga, um, you know, I, I found like just tiny little grass clump, uh, mm. and you know, I could just line up and just hit it perfectly with that 360, even with the wind blowing and everything and caught, you know, caught several big fish doing that. But, yeah. uh, but yeah, I just feel like, I feel like some of the guys really click with the forward shooting, like the, the mega live and the pan optics, because they just, they want to stare at their screen all day long, you know? Yeah. I want to I want to be kind of looking around, observing, you know, seeing what's going on, and then glance down, look at my Mega Live. I mean, or sorry, look at my uh, Mega Three Sixty. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, the Mega Three Sixty makes it where you don't you're not glued to the screen. You know, yeah, you can fish and do what you want to do, and then glance down there and and you know see what's around you. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you now, I've used the Mega 360 and I love it. You're exactly right. And especially even on places like Cherokee, you know, when they get out there, even when they're deep, you know, you know how it is, man, they get down in those rocks. And a lot of times you get out to where you get to those one or two rocks out there that you can see, you know, and that's where uh, there's going to be a bunch of them down in those little cracks. And you know you're you're not going to see them. There, you you can scan that live around. You're not going to see them, 
But when they're down there and they're in those little cracks or they're even up shallow, you can throw something across and, and you know, all of a sudden you're getting got. So <laughs> now guys, make sure, you know, I'm not, you know, wheeled down through here yet, but guys, make sure you got an elite pro here. We got 55 in here. Make sure you're tossing those questions in here. I want to give a big shout out to Kevin. He got his EFX steps in today. Hey man, those things are great. Trust me, being an old fat man, they sure saved my knees from jumping up and down off my old Triton that I'm running. So uh, hopefully, hopefully going to pick up another little safety, uh, safety add on uh, here in the next few months, but uh, make sure you drop some questions in here. We got a pro. So uh, when do you start and what tips you off? You know, we're talking about, you know, the post spawn and what tips you off? When do you start throwing that walking bait? Uh, just, you know, anytime the, the water reaches in the upper 60s, you know, I feel like a lot of the fish start spawning uh, once the water temp hits 60. Now, you know, granted, there's there's always late spawners and stuff like that, but uh, but I feel like once the water temp gets in the, the upper 60s, that's when they really start feeding on top. And then I'll just, obviously, I'll just ride it out all the way until the fall of the year. And, uh, you know, really like the fall of the year, that's when you can catch them on top in probably like the coolest tents because they're still very <laughs> aggressive. Um, you know, I've, I've called them, I want to say it was like in the low to mid 50s, uh, pretty good on top. So um, obviously you can, you can ride it out a little bit more on in colder water in the fall than you can in the spring. But, but yeah, I mean, I would say upper 60s, you know, that's the telltale sign that post spawn is definitely happening or it's going, it's right around the corner. And so that's, that's when I start throwing that top water bay for sure. So Gators adventure says he loves the Yoziri, Yoziri jerk baits. Uh, they're his favorite and he's caught a bunch on them this year. Now here's a question from uh, Michael and it says any suggestions on using the Yoziri pencil popper? When, when do you see that? playing best yeah so so the, the way i kind of tell people is that uh i'm going to use that pencil popper uh, when i'm fishing more offshore um you know whether it's schooling fish or you know i'm just like uh for instance that you know down here fishing on a uh, heart wool or something where you're making super long cast over cane piles uh, shallow brush piles and trying to pull fish up that's when that pencil popper really excels uh, it's just so heavy and it's and it's tail weighted it's got that, mm -hmm. that that big you know one knocker weight in the the rear of the bait and you can just cast that bait probably further than any other top water bait i've ever thrown um, so that's when it excels like i said schooling fish and then you know fishing um, a little bit deeper water, trying to draw fish up because it does make a, quite a commotion on the surface. And then so then, you know, when I'm fishing shallower, that's when I throw, you know, just the, the regular pencil, just the 3DB pencil. Um, I throw the 100 size and then also the uh, 125. Uh, the 125's got three hooks. The 100's got two hooks uh, for like, more pinpoint cast you want to throw that 100 you can place that thing wherever you want to put it you know it's it's kind of similar to what craig powers does with the p70 um you know it's now just, wait i know there's a lot of young guys on here that don't know who craig powers is by the way legend legend in our area if you right. grew up around us he's a legend so a little background on craig powers he was uh flw pro Am I right? Yeah. He, oh, yeah. 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 Sometimes. And he is the man with a popper, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, trust me, there's plenty out there. Go mm -hmm. look it up. He's the man with one. Yeah. Finish he, that statement right there. Sorry. He can, he can put a uh, 
Uh, Rebel P70, which that's the bigger popper. He can put that in places where guys could dream about only pitching. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's that accurate. Yeah. Obviously, um, you know, he's probably the one of the best casters to ever play, you know, to ever fish, fish uh, professionally. Yeah. So, uh, I'm not on his level as far as casting accuracy, but I will tell you, I've cast, I've cast the P70 and I've thrown my, um, my Yozuri 30B pencil the 100 size and i think the 100 is just as accurate you know it, it always casts tail first uh, it's not going to spin on you or nothing like that um so for pinpoint cast around bushes dogs anything up shallow throw that 100 and then you know if you're fishing more you know points maybe more exposed areas where there's a little bit more chop then throw that uh the pencil 125 uh, but yeah, those two, and then, you know, then that pencil popper, the pencil popper is a 135, so it's even bigger, but all three of those baits are just phenomenal in the post-spawn time. Of year. They are. I love them out on Douglas. When you get a little bit of chop out there over some deep stuff, when they're suspended up, you can call yeah. them up, man. It's great. That's so, nice. uh, now being, being that you fished up in Kentucky, this is one of my buddies and you could tell him how much you hate Lake Cumberland. I tell him all the time. How much <laughs> <you hate. laughs> I'm kidding, but uh, diehard anglers. This is one of my buddies here. Uh, what do you like to fish, Cumberland? When was the last time you ever got to fish it? Uh, the last time was probably I. I guess when I was living up there. So I mean, I I graduated in '09, so it, it's been a while. I don't think I fished it since '09. Wow! So it's been yeah. a minute. It, it has been a while. Yeah. I, what, well, no, I'll take that back. I, I went up there the year after I graduated and fished a uh, fished a tournament in April. It was a spawning tournament, the smallmouth are spawning. So really right now, there should still be a fair amount of spawning fish happening mm -hmm. right now in Cumberland. Yeah. And uh, Cumberland's a great uh, sight fishing lake, you know, as long as it there is. As long as there hasn't been like a flood recently, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, they, then, then the whole lake turns muddy. But uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, I've had some phenomenal days sight fishing smallmouth on that lake. Uh, but I tell you, the last year or two when I was up there, they had the water drawn down like 40, 50 feet because they were mm -hmm. working on a dam. Oh. We had some fun days then because <laughs> obviously all the fish are confined and yeah. they're pretty predictable. Then they, they kept it down for two or three, four years. And all this, uh, you know, trees and vegetation yep. up on the shoreline <clears throat> and they brought it up. And I think like as soon as they brought it up, it was really good fishing. But then after a while, it was like there was too many targets. And so, yeah. so it's like those fish could be hiding anywhere. And oh, uh, yeah. I, I've not fished it since they brought it up. I fished it a few years ago. And so help me, I've never seen it. it just so happens it flooded. Yeah. You know, they dropped it. And I've never been on a lake where I've seen a, a, literally a mile wide log jam where you have to literally come oh, off yeah. plane and, and cut your way through it. The first day of the BFL, what's funny is I, I, I was fishing as a, a non-boater and the very next BFL was on the Barren River. And I got, uh, I got with a guy and they, he was the guy that hit the log that threw them out on launch that morning. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, did you hear about them guys getting? He's like, yeah, that was me. And I was like, I'm going to hold on tight. <laughs> <laughs> but he did. Yeah, that, that place gets gnarly when it floods. I mean, yeah. It, honestly, there was a couple of years ago when uh, when Bassmaster uh, canceled a tournament on the upper Chesapeake Bay due to flooding in the Susquehanna River. And there was like, there was big trees and logs, you know, coming down with Susquehanna. And uh, and they like canceled it. And I was like, you guys ain't seen nothing. Nothing. See the logs and the log jams and the trees. Refrigerators, the cows. I'm telling you, yeah. man, I seen stuff floating that I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, and, that, and like like back then, of course, now maybe they're a little bit safer. But back then, yeah. the BFLs and those BFLs, no, they were like, Hammer down, guys. It was pouring the rain that day. That day, man, they were like, they were like calling it now. Go, go, go! <laughs> yeah, they didn't. Yeah, it, I mean, they're that, like, you signed that waiver. You die on you. We're going. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not just like one log jam. It's literally logged yeah. in every quarter mile. Yes. You get was... to idle through them. And... Uh, I got to say this because this is cool. Uh, ben, I made a crib mobile for my children and grandchildren out of fishing lures. No hooks, of course. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'd like to see that. And then we've got Gator Adventures again. Uh, what's Brandon's favorite Yoziri bait? So if you and you any fishing anything any season, if you had to pick one bait you knew was going to catch them, what's your favorite Yoziri to to catch them on? Well, I mean, my favorite is the one I've, I've been talking about, the Yoziri 3B pencil. There you uh, go. But but for any season, I would have to go with the 3DB Dirt Bait 110. Uh, it's going to work all year long. And, uh, you know, speaking of post spawn, last year at Lake Fork, I caught mm. some shots on that thing. Um, you know, it was a shad spawn deal in the morning. And, uh, you know, I, I had been catching them more offshore cranking. And, uh, you know, the, the shad spawn was going on the second day and I pulled that dirt bait out and just went to put the herd on them. And ever since then, I've just fallen in love with that bait. Um, it's just, it's a great bait all year long, man. Like you can, you can throw it in the, the dead of summer and catch them on it, the fall, winter, spring. So, so that's going to be the one I would, I would say for year round fishing, you definitely have to have the 3D. You go. Yeah. All right. So first time, first time uh, summer fisher here, what do I need to have as my essentials? He's a bank angler and mostly small ponds. So, you know, I don't know how much experience you have with small ponds, but if you were going to tell him he's fishing small ponds, what would be, we'll just say the two or three things you would absolutely have in the summer in your tackle box. Is he fishing like shallow ponds or deep ponds? Well, we'll we'll just say shallow, just you know, regular. We'll, we'll just say the just old regular ponds. Old yeah. farm I mean, ponds around. Obviously, top water, um, you know, ha has to be your you know go to when you're when you're fishing ponds. Uh, if there's any grass around the bank, which a lot of ponds do, you know, uh, you 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 probably want to throw that frog a lot, um, you know, whether it's a hollow body frog or yeah. like, like a buzz toad, um, you know, like a, like a horny toad or, you know, some, some baits along, along those uh, lines. And then, uh, man, it's hard to be, let me see. Uh, it's hard to be the Yamamoto D shad, which is just, which is our soft dirt bait. Um, you can, you know, you can fish that fast on top. You can, you can obviously just slow twitch it and let it sink. Um, you definitely have to have a five inch Cinco in there. I mean, for pond fishing, I mean, that's like essential, you know, whether you're going to put that on a wacky rig on a spinner mm -hmm. rod, or you can just put it on a bait caster with a lot, um, you know, three sixteenths ounce or a one eighth uh, ounce weight and just pitch it around. Uh, pond fishing is so much fun, man. I, I was actually able to, to get out on a pond uh, the other day with the uh, with the kid and um, man, we we had so much fun. It, it's it, awesome, dude. It, That's awesome. It, it takes what what's cool about pond fishing is it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it because you know that the fish are here. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you, you don't have to find them. You know they're there. You just have to trick them into buying. Yeah, and that's that's the cool thing about it because you know when we fish on lakes, you have to find them. Then catch them. yeah, yeah. Uh, what it, what's the old rule? Uh, uh, ninety percent of the fish are in ten percent of the water. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh now listen, Mike. I know you're fishing at BFL. I think I've seen you post already, and his brother might be fishing it. So I don't know how many tips he wants to give out this week. Uh, any tips? that you want to give for fish in South Houston. You got much experience up here on my home body of water? Actually, I, I don't. Um, I've only fished it a few times, and that's been in the cold, the colder months. Mm -hmm. uh, I fished with Nathan Light up there. I line. remember seeing that. A tight line I with remember. with him. Yeah. He kicked my butt like, like he always does. <laughs> he, the he tight is so line. Good. He hey, is what so is it? He fishes it on like – like three or four pound test. I mean, it's crazy, man. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that on three or four yeah. pound test. 
But yeah, he is uh he's the he's tight the line titan, no doubt yeah, about it. He, he's the man. And then uh then I went up there one other time and we were dropping on him. Um mm. so I I'm not I've actually never fished at this time of year. Mm. Um, so. I will say this. I'm gonna be out there in the next two days. I was actually out there yesterday. I don't want to give away too much. But let's just say the wave has not came, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Anybody that like knows. Spawning smallmouth, um, <laughs> that sounds like it's going to be a blast. Let, let me just say, hey, here, here's a question for me. I'm, I'm going to ask. So I've, I, this is what I found. I kind of got it confirmed today on a small local lake. So I'll tell you what I found. I'm not going to tell you, give away the exact secrets, but I'm going to give away bites. Uh, so on South Holston, there's certain areas that you target because there's certain places and types of rock, just like on Cherokee, that they like to spawn on, right? Yeah. So I've fished South Holston for years and years and years. And uh, we, I'd hit some of these places, throw a little such and such in there, a little worm, and you'd feel poop, poop, swing, they wouldn't be there. Throw it in again, get another hit, swing, they wouldn't be there. So you'd throw it back in and nothing. You'd go on down that bank, and all of a sudden you'd see it swimming off. Set it, pull it in, two and half, you know, fight, man. God, I love it. That's why I love doing it. Let him back out, go back down, you'd get those bites again. So generally, my thought, you tell me if I'm – right or wrong because i'm i'm thinking this and i've, I've kind of talked to people about it they seem to never listen to me so if i'm right hopefully i'll get my boy brandon here to back me up <laughs> so what i'm thinking is two and three quarters some of those could be females but a couple of them were peeing too you know so what i'm thinking is those are males that are starting to run off. That's why they're pecking at it, not mad enough to eat it a lot of times. They're males that are starting to run off. Now, the bites that I, the fish that I actually caught are locked in because I never felt the bite. I just seen the line swimming off. Do you think my thought process wrong or right? Yeah, maybe. And, and it, it might just be um, that that the ones that are pecking at it have just got there. That's and what I'm thinking. Yeah. They're, they're just pulling up. Yeah. They're just, they're saying, this is my area. They're uh -huh. making big circles. Yeah. 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 So the, the ones that eat it, they don't, they made the little circle. Yeah. They, they've been there for, for a day or two. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you know, more than likely you, you're right. It is like smaller males, but I mean, it, it could be some finicky females in there too, you know, that, that are just, just kind of, uh, you know, indecisive and, you know, not really locked in yet. Um, so now how much do you think go ahead sorry now we do need to to tell everybody that once you get a bite in an area where you think smallmouth are spawning you better fish slow through that area because smallmouth spawn in groups unlike largemouth largemouth you'll, you'll find one on a bed here you'll go down the bank for you know another uh, 100 yards 200 yards and you may find another one smallmouth it's like they spawn so tight together obviously yeah. not as tight as bluegill yeah but, but they do spawn very close together so and that's kind of what was happening mm -hmm. i'd go down through there there'd be a peck here peck there yeah. you know you'd throw a couple different baits in at that spot and they wouldn't react to it generally so i went to a small lake over here on virginia super ultra clear like the lake itself is maybe uh Average 35 foot deep, but, uh, you know, it's, it's right there in that, uh, mid sixties range, you know, super clear 15 foot. You could see, you know, for a 35 foot lake, you see 15, 15 and 20 foot, the rocks on the bottom, pretty crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. So I went down the banks and you could literally see small mouth and large mouth and you could tell they were running stuff, nipping at other bass and bluegill. And you'd throw bait in there and they'd come running to it and they'd maybe just swim off or, you know, whatever. So that's kind of why I was thinking like the major wave is, uh, has not yet. The tsunami has not came. 
<laughs> yeah, honestly, it may be like a perfect storm for, for Saturday. Y'all may just – it may yeah. be a complete whack fest. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm thinking because – now, so my second question to you, how what, how much do you think Moonface actually plays in? Because I'm a big believer that during the, you know, full and new moon, that that's that's when most of your waves now there's always outliers you know like right now we're in a super temperature spike yeah. and uh you know because it's been really cold for the most part up here this year compared to yeah. the last couple of years and uh so we're in a, a huge temperature spike 80 degree days for like four straight days yeah. um tomorrow we're going to see a little cold front come in going to be you know 50 60 and then we're back up into the 60s and 70s for the rest of the week so how much do you think when it comes i know we're supposed to be talking about spawn but how much do you think or postpone but how much do you yeah. think moon phases how important do you think they they actually are because the new moon is either friday or saturday yeah well i think the temperature spike is by far the most important so i i think that the water temp you know, having those stable, uh, you know, warm days, warm nights, that's going to be the number one factor to trigger them. But I definitely think the the second most important is the moon phase for sure. Obviously, the, the full moon is going to be your best. The new moon is going to be, you know, the second best as far as the moon phase goes. Uh, but, but yeah, those warm nights, in my mind, that's going to be the most important. Well, see, that's what I think. So, so this leads me to a third question. What do you think? Because like the, the full moon, we had a small warm up, maybe three days in the mid and low seventies, but then the night of the full moon, the bottom dropped out. I mean, I think the next day it snowed. So, uh, so, you know, it's real cold. So do you think that would push them back? Some of them probably did come up to spawn. I think maybe the first wave then. What, what's your opinion on a, an immediate cold, cold snap that comes up right at the full moon like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I don't think that they're, they're just going to go ahead and spawn. I mean, some of them okay. will. Just, yeah. Some of them will just because they're just stubborn. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but I think, I think most of the ones, you know, they pay attention to the weather way more than we do. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they can, they can feel that water temperature drop in. They can feel the barometric pressure and all that. And they just know that, you know, Hey, if I drop these eggs right now, you know, the chances of them surviving is not good. So they just really? wait. And so whether it's a full moon or not, if the water temperature is not right, they just, they just hold on to it. That's why I think it's going to be fun for the BFLers this weekend. I think it's going to be a fun, fun bite. Uh, oh, yes. uh, I think fun. As far as smallmouth fishing goes, you know, I think it doesn't get any better than, well, obviously post-spawn smallmouth is probably the best, obviously, yeah. when they're pouncing on a topwater bait. But there is something to be said about catching – you know, four or five or six big smallmouth off of one yeah. little rounded point. Yeah. You know, and they're mad. And, you know, yeah. And, and you're you, throwing them little baits. And I mean, even the males, I mean, I, I was like, holy cow, what do I have here? You know, and then they'd come up and jump three times yeah. and you're throwing, you know, six or eight pound test line. You know, and it's just like, oh my Lord. This is, yeah. I mean, you, me can, you can go from like, nothing in your in your box to like 18 19 pounds and literally like 10 casts yeah yeah like, what just happened yeah <laughs> yeah oh shoot wow. it's fun man I, it's it's one of my favorite bites of the year i live for it wow. All right, guys, so yeah. I do real quick, we are 48 minutes in. I think Brandon's got some questions, but I do want to show you what we're going to give away, okay? So we're going to give away some yum dingers, okay? This is, uh, we're going to give away a few packs. This is Russ Vegas, uh, Blue Smoke, uh, Gold Mine, uh, Green Clown, uh, let's see what else we got here, and Green Pumpkin Sparkle. If you like guys want to sparkle and uh we are giving away some lucky charms so maybe that'll be your lucky charm for one lucky person and we are giving away a new color from booyah so the pad crasher in disco ball speaking of shad spawn and post spawn the shad spawn 
this right here would be real fun to throw over top of some of those beds and those uh, shad spawners. So that's what you're going to get tonight. We'll do it at the end. we got 88 people in here. We appreciate you. I know you're all asking questions. I see Brandon just scrolling down through there right now. Do you see anything? Uh, Eric White, uh, he posted at 834. He said, uh, please ask Brandon how he fished at the High Rock BFL this past Saturday. Um, that That's a sore subject. Um, oh, God. <laughs> I, I just... I just had one of those days. So I weighed in three fish for like right under nine pounds, like eight something. And so I jumped off a six and a half pounder. Um, I also lost a three and a quarter pounder that I actually wound up getting to bite again. It, it, it was a spawn of fish. Mm. Uh, the second time I got that fish to bite, I foul hooked it, had to throw it back. Um, let's see, I, I fished for a six pounder that was getting ready to bite, and I was like, almost, she was almost there. And then all of a sudden she just swam off the bed and I broke a, I broke a good bite off on, on a brush pile. It was literally like the nightmare day that you do not want to have. Um, <laughs> so, so that's, that's what happened to me, uh, at the BFL this past weekend on High Rock. Well, luckily... I, I did say that I went fishing on South Holston uh, yesterday, but that was the exact day I had. <laughs> yeah. I, I managed to boat three. I broke like four off. I finally changed the line on this rod. I don't know what the deal was with the, the line on this rod. I think it was old line uh, because it was an older rod that I was throwing a little bait around. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, it was not a good day for me. I was not happy. I pull up on a dock where I know that some smallmouth spawn on. It's got these metal poles on it. And I mean, I flip right in there. I know exactly where these fish are. Flip right in there. I mean, it's the perfect bite. It's like, sh boom. I mean, you know, it's like, boom. You're like, oh, crack. I got my Dixie custom rod meat stick bowed up and I'm reeling it out. And I stop reeling just for a second and look at my buddy in the back of the boat. And I'm like, get out of the way. And then I start to crank down and all of a sudden it turns sideways and I hear it go ping and it hit this metal pole. You could hear it ping. He heard it from the back of the boat and it basically popped the hook out of its mouth. Oh, <laughs> I was so mad. Oh, yeah. I was so mad. Yeah, so so that six and a half pounder that I lost, uh, it was late in the day, and uh, you know I had been fishing um, shallow for spawning fish for most of the day, and uh, I gave myself an hour at the end of the day to to go fish some of the some of my best docks on the lake, and I and I I literally ran over to my favorite dock, I made the perfect skip cast with the Nico rig, mm. and and I'm I'm just sitting there shaking, and it just gets heavy. I don't feel the bite; it just gets heavy. And I crank down on it and I set the hook and, you know, my eye rod's bent over and I just know, I'm just like, I can't even turn it. And so I'm, I'm worried about it getting wrapped up in the piling and, you know, cause I'm throwing 10 pound, you know, Zuri, uh, fluorocarbon. And so I'm, I'm just keeping steady pressure. And I was like, cause it gets an edit to giant. <laughs> and, and that joker comes up and it's like this wide. It's like just a fat freak, you know, just, just one of those just behemoths. And it just tail walks and it slings my Nico right back at me. And and I reel it in. And, you know, I actually I hit the deck first. Yeah. I down, yeah. Fell down. I had a I had my little tantrum. <laughs> and uh, and then I and then I looked at the looked at the bait and and what happened is my Nico hook actually flipped around and hooked back into my Senko. Just one of those oh, three things. Wow. One of those freak things that hardly ever happens, but it just happened to happen on the the six and a half pounder. So that's always how I happen. Not it, at least to me. So Scott Kessler is asking, what can you do to increase the average size of your fish when you have a pattern for good numbers, but nothing over 14 inches? Yeah, I mean, normally, so so David Dudley has like a saying where he he just basically says that um, that he just tries to catch as many fish as he possibly can over the course of the day, mm. 
and, and if he just continually catches fish, then he's going to catch big ones along the way. And normally that works. Um, but obviously Scott's experience is something, something a little bit different. So, I mean, there are times when, when you do get on a bite where it is just small fish. And, you know, I, I actually had that happen on High Rock last fall. Um, you know, I was throwing a little shallow crankbait on windblown points. And it was like clockwork. I mean, you could just catch Gosh. as many, you could catch as many as you wanted to, but you would never catch a keeper. And so obviously if that's the case, you just finally have to leave. But but there's there's only a few times of the of the year where I will experience that, where it's just, you know, the fish are schooled up and and they're all just small fish. Usually you, you don't find that it's 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 more just kind of mixed in. You're you're catching the small ones, you're you're catching the big ones, and uh, you know you just kind of catch them as you go. Uh, but I would say, obviously, you know, if you're just only catching the small fish, you either need to fish deeper or shallower, or you need to you know obviously change change baits and yeah. So yeah. So, all right, guys, we're going to look down through here. So we, we are almost at an hour, guys. I'm not going to keep Brandon. You know, I know he wants to get in there and spend some time with that uh, sweet woman that he's got in there, his wife. And, you know, that she's, sweet she's little. She's probably already asleep. She's a granny. <laughs> she goes to sleep at like 8 o'clock. <laughs> Well, now don't tell us that. We'll keep you here till like ten. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> answering questions. So we got. I got another one here. By the way, I don't. I've missed that one. Somebody said that you've been their uh, hero there since like nineteen ninety or something. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's my uh, big buddy from high school, Drew Russell. I figured as much. I figured. Yeah, I, I mean, you've been my hero for a while now, but uh, I actually met you uh, with the three B seminars so that's actually the first time way yeah, back before yeah. i was ever doing any sort of youtube bass geek and you know any sort of that stuff so yeah, drew, drew's just drew's being humble he he actually uh drew knows that that he's my hero so he's <laughs> there, you go. there you go there you go so smith mountain lake virginia highland reservoir and clear water uh down uh down lake postpone what is a good technique to start with, that clear water is tough for me, says Kevin. That. Well, I've actually never fished Smith Mountain, but I've I've watched a lot of videos, you know, from from some of the the past Elite Series events and stuff they've had there. And you know, obviously there's there's a lot of dogs on that lake, so that mm -hmm. was, that's probably where I would start because I feel like um, dog fishing on on a new lake, dog fishing is one of the easiest patterns to to, to kind of you know establish and so i would uh i would just honestly i would put my go-to bait in my hand i would i would do a uh, cinco five inch cinco uh probably watermelon um watermelon green pumpkin laminate and then i would just put a 16 ounce nail weight in the head i would uh, i would nico rig it and you know the thing about that Nico rig, in my mind, it, it, it's kind of taken the place of a shaky head. Like I used to throw yeah. shaky, shaky head for years and years and years. Yes. But, uh, but that Nico rig just gets way more bites. I feel like it just has better action, and you can actually you can skip it better than you can skip a shaky head. Yes. And so that's what I would do. I would I would try to establish a dog bite because there, there's some really good dog fishing on that lake. Um, but I, you know, one thing I wouldn't do, uh, on a, on a lake like that is I wouldn't just go down a long section of docks and just burn up a lot of time. I would, I would strategically try to fish some in pockets. I would fish a handful on points and then I'd fish some on steeper banks and just try to establish a pattern within the docks. And then once you start getting a couple of bites, then you can obviously, you know, spend, you know, your time in high percentage areas and, and instead of just burning up, you know, half of your day, you know, fishing dogs and, you know, just, just nonchalantly fishing them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now that I'll, I'll tell you something else. I'm a big proponent because I fish clear water. I actually love clear water and I, I agree with everything, you know, Brandon says, and he's the elite pro, but one of the things that I've kind of learned uh, and, and kind of go to, in clear water, uh, especially in, you know, post spawn for me, 
is I love it because, you know, everybody in Clearwater wants to downsize, 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 but trans translucent lures can be a huge thing too. And I know Brandon knows this, uh, <clears throat> you know, one of the things I discovered a long time ago, and I know other guys found it more than me, but you know, your, your swim baits, you know, mm. this is a uh, Strike King and this is a Ghost Shad. It's, it doesn't look at here, but I mean, it is basically completely translucent. And so they'll see a hundred of those worms come by. Sometimes you can get stuff and even the swim baits, if there's one thing that I'm good at, it's soft plastic swim baits. And this is a Ramsey bait. This is silver smoke and it's translucent too. But your hollow bodies have a lot of wobble. So they're more like kind of those rock crawlers, wiggle warts, those big fat baits. But you get a nice little thin flat side, flat top, and it's got a little more natural action to it and those can be great you know and you can skip these so easy under docks that's another thing you know you give them a little bit different presentation so don't be afraid in clear water what i've discovered it's either going to be one side of the spectrum so it's either going to be those worms that finesse stuff or it's going to be some that bigger side of the spectrum something like that will give them fired up it's Rarely does it seem in clear water to fall right in the middle. It seems to be one or the other in clear yeah. water for whatever reason. That's true. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> man, there was another one. Oh, yeah, this was this is just real cool. This is cool. So, Mr. Jones, he won the giveaway that Brandon did on our first ever. So, hey, man, thanks for sticking around. I haven't bored you to death. I appreciate that. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if that's Michael Jones uh, from Knoxville. Is it? Is it Mike Jones from Knoxville? Yeah. Let's can, let's see, see if it is. Or not. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us if that's that's the name. Maybe you you don't want to tell us, but well, <laughs> if it, if it's Michael Jones, then then you know he's my buddy. He actually helps me put on the high school and college tournament. So I wonder. It it may be a different. It may be a different. Uh, but that'd still be pretty cool. Uh, he's, he's Matt Jones from Birmingham. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Thanks for tuning back in. All that's right. Good. Let's see. I'm scrolling down through here. We've talked about a lot of stuff. I've learned a lot tonight, man. I appreciate Brandon. Hopefully, we're going to get Brandon to kind of start being a little bit of a, of a, you know, when he's, oh, excuse me again, when he's not busy because we know the elite pros are hugely busy. Oh, I seen one a minute ago, and I'm sorry to whoever this was, and I wanted to ask you. So, are you running lithiums now? Somebody asked me what oh, yeah. lithiums you're running. Yeah, uh, I saw that one. I saw that one. Uh, I've actually been running lithium pro batteries. They're out of Knoxville. I've been running them. I'm pretty sure since my sophomore year on tour. So that's ten years. I've been running uh, lithium pro batteries. Um, you know, I've. I've had other opportunities with other lithium companies, but I've had such success with lithium pros mm -hmm. and they're just such great people there. I mean, you know, heck being a neat from East Tennessee, I mean, you can go right there to the shop, talk to them, just really good guys. You know, Kevin, Kevin Ben is the owner. Um, you know, Joe, he, he pretty much runs, you know, runs the whole uh, pro staff and, um, yeah, he, he's, he's a great, I mean, they're both great guys. They make a great product. And uh, I've had nothing but success out of Lithium Pro batteries. Uh, this year, I'm actually, actually for the past couple of years, I'm only running one 36 volt uh, Lithium wow. battery for trolling. So wow. I have one battery for trolling. And then, uh, and then on, on my starting side, of course, I got five hummingbirds on my boat now. So I kind of got to, kind of got to beef up my, um, that side of the thing. I have two 12 volt lithium pros run parallel. And so that's, so that's, that's cool. literally all I have. I have those two batteries, uh, two 12 volt batteries on parallel. And I got the 136 volt. And then I have the power pole charge, uh, which is, in my opinion, that's the best charger that's ever uh, been built, uh, especially for lithium batteries. You definitely want a power pole charge. Um, that that takes all the guesswork out of it. You can see exactly, you know, how how much charge you have on your batteries. Uh, if you need to take power from one lithium battery and send it to the other one, you can do that on your uh, on the app. Um, so definitely, I would recommend if you do the lithium pro battery, get you a power pole charge for sure. Awesome. 
Yeah, that power pole charge is pretty cool. Those, those lithiums, I met those guys down at the uh, uh, classic when they were uh, uh, when they were in Knoxville last. They're going to be in Knoxville next year. I can't wait for that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Down, uh, you know, maybe Brandon come up. Maybe we get to go out and have some dinner when he comes up here. Unless, unless he's winning it. Now I hope he's winning it. You know, uh, I, I hope I'm winning it too. I, I think he's got a pretty good chance. I, I believe he knows the lake a little bit that they're fishing on. He, yeah. You know, he, you know, so. Fish uh, it a handful of times over Yeah, there. just a couple, three, a couple, three. <laughs> we we might have already talked a little bit about it in this. Yeah. Uh, yeah so we, I, I didn't fish the first one. I, I didn't qualify for the first yeah, one. So yeah. I better I qualify for this one. I've actually in my in my ring of honor. Let me see. I never get this right. Right's left, left's right. Okay, you see that up there? That's my little signed hats. And guess who's who's got a Suzuki signed hat up there? Oh, there from you Mr. Go. Mr. Brandon Card. So yeah. uh, I'm not a fan at all. Just so you know, <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, that I got well, from down that, there. There was one other question about. Uh, uh, bait colors for uh, sight fishing, whether to throw uh, natural versus white. Uh, Tom, Tom at a nine oh one. Nine oh one. Tom Brennan. Ah, yeah, see it right here. Neil, we'll get back to you on this one. Thank you. Poppers or walking baits during the early post spawn, real quick. Uh, the walking baits, obviously. Yeah. That's, that I can just cover so much more water. Yeah. I mean, I do like throwing a popper, but I just feel like you have to fish it so much slower. Yeah, I agree with that. So Brandon asked natural colors or white or bright colors for bed fishing. Um, I, I always start out with natural. You know, I feel like I feel like a lot of times those first several, those first few casts that you that you throw on the bed, those are some of your most important casts because a lot of times you can get that fish to bite especially if you stay off of the fish and you make a pinpoint cast, you can catch them on first, second or third cast a lot of times. But as I, if that fish is stubborn and as if I have to keep working it, you know, working it for a while, I would say I'm going to throw natural for probably 20, 30 minutes. And then kind of as a last resort thing, I'll go to white. Mm -hmm. um, I know some guys, you know, start out with white and, and that's what works for them. But but in my mind, I don't need to see the bait. I know where my bait is just just based on you know obviously just fishing it through the fishing it through the bed. You know I can uh, I can see how the fish is acting. So so I don't have to see my bait. Um, you know to to know where it is because I I can see how the fish is responding. Um, so natural usually is the way to go. But there are some times where a white bait just triggers a fish in the bottom. And yeah. so I, I mean, I experienced that on uh, Kentucky Lake, the last elite series we had there several years ago, you know, I was pitching my natural, you know, uh, the, the bait I like to throw is the Yamamoto psycho dad. Mm. It, it doesn't have any salt in it. Most of the Yamamoto baits have salt. This one uh, doesn't have any salt. And so the, the, the claws float up and, it's nice. just it, it's just a great uh, great bed bait because those claws just kind of stay in the fish's face. Yeah, and so I, I was I kept pitching my green pumpkin in there, green pumpkin, and like that fish kept he was almost wanting to bite it, but then he didn't. And then by golly, as soon as I put on white, it was within the first or second <laughs> cast. Like he just went all. <laughs> <over>. <laughs> That's funny. He almost jerked the rod out of and he bit so hard. So yeah. <laughs> I, I always try why, you know, as a last resort, definitely, yeah. because th there are sometimes it, it really makes, makes a big difference. For me, I'm with you 100%. I'm going natural colors 90% of the time. And if the water's just stained up enough to where you want to, where you can barely see the fish, you know, might start out. For me, it's it, it's really comes down to a watercolor issue. Yeah. Like you said, I, I'll if they can, I'll eventually throw something white in there anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, when using a drop shot, what's your go-to rod length and flex? Um, generally, generally, when it comes to using a rod length, I just flex it and go boing and let it go out of the boat and go home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so so there's there's two different um there's two different rods that i rod so i rod my rod sponsor and they're they're made out of california um they, they make some great rods but there's two that i use when i'm drop shotting so um they're both in the genesis line so this is a genesis three and there's a there's a seven one medium action and so it's it's just called um it's just called their uh, Power Finesse Medium. It's a 7-1. It's a and then there's a 7-1 Medium Heavy Power Finesse. And so those are my two. So the, the one that I probably use the most is just the Medium. And, you know, that's for short pitches, obviously vertical fishing. It just has, like, the perfect load. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's perfect. But there are times when I'm making a long cast and and – and when I use this heavy rod, the medium heavy, that's when I'm offshore. I'm either fishing like a school, like like on Kentucky Lake or Gunnersville or where Douglas. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of times, you know, you could throw that drop shot out there to him, and you're so deep and, and the bait's so far away. I want to have a little bit more, you know, I, I want to have a stiffer rod to get yeah. to the him. And so that's when I go to the medium heavy. But those two rods are definitely the ones I use. Uh, but but for if you just wanted to buy one, buy that just the seven one medium power finesse. It's a Genesis three and you, you'll love it. it. It's it's a great rod. So Gator Adventures, Brandon, do you ever fish the bold table rock color? Yeah, I do, uh, but the water has to be pretty dingy for it. Um, you know, my favorite uh, Yozuri color, and, and he's probably asking about our dirt bait color, uh, the bowl table rock. My favorite one is the Ghost Sexy Shad. I feel like that's the best for, you know, stain, oh, yeah. stain to, to clear water. Now, in crystal clear water, I'll go to, uh, to you know, more of the translucent ones that we have. Uh, but that bowl table rock, I'll, I'll throw that when the water, in my mind, when the water is just a little bit too stained for that go sexy shad. Gotcha. And now I want to give a sorry. Go ahead. Uh, if it's a really cloudy day too, and the, obviously the visibility is is low, then yeah. bowl table rock is good. A uh, big shout out to my guy, Tackle Junkie eighty one, another YouTuber. We do a lot of lives together and uh, a lot of stuff. And so in since he stopped in, since he stopped by, we're going to ask Keeper Cole to Mr. Brandon Card. If you keep it, you like it. If you keep it, you like it. If you don't like it, then you call it biscuits uh, and gravy. Biscuits and gravy. Keep them or call them. You're going to eat oh. them or not. Oh, no. No. You don't like biscuits and gravy? I oh, mean, it, it's okay, but, but I won't. <laughs> I want some substance to my to my biscuit. <laughs> I want I want some chicken on there. I okay, eggs, okay, you got a little protein in there. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I like some biscuits and gravy. He he's never even ate biscuits and gravy before. Never <laughs> even ate them. So you know, whew, can't believe it. All right, what are we doing here? See, we've got diehard angler giving him a hard time about it. It's kind of a running joke with us. <laughs> That we give him a hard time about it. Now, see there, he's like, ah, sausage, sausage biscuit. There you go. No, I, I can't do a sausage biscuit. I, I'll be First up, thing in the morning, that's dangerous when you're going to I'll be up on the bank half the day. I mean, <laughs> if you want me to stay in the boat, you don't want sausage biscuit. Yeah, yeah, trust me. <laughs> I'm going to die here. You got me tickled. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, we are going to wrap it up. Uh, you know, the table rock color, I actually uh, I actually use a swim bait uh, first of the year. It's a table rock color. It's in one of these. And uh, I actually use that on Douglas a lot. It's one of my favorite go-tos. You know, water's still a little bit dingy where they're, they've finished raising it up. You yeah. know, has it, has it cleared up as much? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it gets bit pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. We we done covered that. Mr. White, he uh his wife is from down there and he's got the again, congratulations on the seven month old bouncing baby boy. Yeah, so we just wanted to to let him know. I'm checking out. So check it out. Let's let's get a couple of questions. See if you see anything. 
down through there. I think I'm at the bottom and I'm not seeing anything else. I think everybody's stuck on the biscuits and gravy, <laughs> giving tackle jerky a hard time. Ah, right, uh, here we go. Joey's asking, yeah, about big swim baits for betting bass. Um, not actually, I have never done that. Um, uh, you're the swim yeah, I've bait never leader. done it. I now I when I I love swim baits, but you know this I've actually never thrown them for bed and bass. Now, uh, generally I'm a I like a I like a swim bait like a uh, uh, oh my gosh like a glide a single single uh, Lord I'm, I can't speak all of a sudden a, a glide bait yeah I like a single you know swivel glide bait from when it's cold late winter early spring right up to but i've never really thrown them for the uh for the bedders i've never really thrown them for bass that are on the bed mm -hmm. i like a bull shad style so a multi-joint uh for right i mean right before when they're really feeding you know, so two, three weeks before and burn it, throw it around trees, the same types of stuff you'd throw, you know, that last deep water, the same types of stuff you'll throw it around. And again, hard baits, guys, I got a video coming out, hard versus soft. Anytime you're throwing a hard bait, man, you want some sort of chop, some sort of dirty. I know everybody's like, ah, oh, ultra clear, but I had more success when I, when I treat it just like a bigger hard bait, big soft bait, big hard bait, same sort of thing. Alabama rig, I can take an Alabama rig, go to that last deep water, throw it over some trees and laydowns. But that big bull shad, I'll do the same thing. I like that nine inch. And man, you're trucking it. You throw it up there and it's a hundred miles an hour, and you wouldn't believe the fish that'll come up to it. And when they get when they they get almost back to the boat, you just give it a rip and it'll spin around and they'll just head first. So it's it's awesome. That's you know, that's my take on those swim baits but uh, uh I've, I've not done it a lot when they're on the bed i, I just i don't know i'm just not you know just hadn't really thought about it it's just something maybe uh, to me it's a moving bait so you know I, I'm, I'm not i've not really thought about it that way yeah yeah i'm not either so uh, a couple of couple of guys ask about um, like on the water, like training, like uh, Eric White just asked about uh, the hummingbird lesson. Um, I really don't don't do the guiding anymore, but but something that that I that I am offering this year, uh, which I've already done one, it was an on the water demo day, and so I, I did one like I guess it was three I mean, three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. And so I just pretty much, it's just, I mean, it's free. I mean, you, you can just come and, and I can basically, I just say, I'll demo anything you want to see on my boat. If you want to see how my Vexus runs, we'll, we'll run the Vexus around. If you That's want to see cool. how the Suzuki runs, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll talk about the Suzuki. We can talk about everything. Um, you know, I'll, I'll demo the Mega Live. We'll demo the 360 side imaging. Whatever you want to look at, we'll talk about. Um, so I'm going to do another one of those on High Rock Lake here probably, let's say uh, it's April. I would say maybe late May. I'll probably do another one. And then I'll probably do maybe like a third one in the fall of the year. So just, just, uh, just you know, um, stay post or stay tuned to my uh, uh, Instagram and Facebook, I, you know, I'll be, you know, promoting it on there. But I would say after, um, it's either going to be probably after the Fork event or after the Pickwick event, I'll, I'll try to fit it in there. And, uh, but I'll, I'll, you know, talk about it, you know, and promote it uh, beforehand to, to give people a chance to, you know, make plans, especially if they're coming from East Tennessee to make plans to get over here. So, um, so yeah, it'll just be a full day, you know, and I, I essentially, uh, just block off an hour for each person. So, oh, so I'll, wow. spend, I'll spend an hour in the boat showing you anything and everything you, you want to see. So now just for anybody that don't know, go ahead and give a shout out to, uh, all the social interwebs that you have out there and where they can find and follow 
Elite Pro, Mr. Brandon Carr? Yeah, just, you know, mostly on Facebook and Instagram, um, you know, Twitter as well. Um, I'm not I'm not a YouTube beast like you, so uh, <laughs> I need I need to hire you to to beef up my 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 YouTube presence. I'm I'm so, for hire anytime you want me. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one thing, man. That uh, I I don't have any interest in editing videos whatsoever. So un, until I can find somebody to film and edit for me, uh, my YouTube channel is going to be pretty terrible. Listen, I- I tell people all the time I, I can make video better videos than uh, for others than I can for myself. And the reason why is because my, my, here's my cameraman. He's a pole. So yeah. he doesn't really move around a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, I can't fish and film at the same time. I have to have accessories. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'm Liz, I'll help you out anytime you want it. You know that. Uh, so, uh, let's go ahead. I will, we'll take some more questions real quick. I want to get this shared up guys. Forgive me, Brandon. Uh, you know, I'm an IT guy, but I always forget how to do this. So (laughs) I'm going to share a screen out and let's see. I got to find, there we go. A Chrome tab and the giveaway tool. There we go. Made us teeny tiny over there. All right, guys. So again, I'm going to go over before we we do everything here. I'm giving away some yum dingers and a whole bunch of different. I'm not going to run through every single color, but trust me, these are their new colors and there is a bunch of them here. Good time. We're talking about postpone right here. So this is a good good thing. You can you know, wacky rig them. You can Nico rig them. You can do all kinds of different stuff. And we're going to give away one of the new Booyah Disco Ball Pad Crashers. Another good little bait for the post bomb. Now, oh, let's see. Uh, we got to pick Brandon. You got to do it real fast. I'm going to, I'm going to do a hashtag and make it, make it fairly simple. But give me a hashtag. Um, I'll tell you what, just to, just to make it real quick. You got your phone with you? Yeah. All right. All right. Text it to me. So a hashtag. You pick whatever word, whatever you want to do, and then I'll type it in up there as soon as I get it, and then everyone will see it. Oh, so so I just need to text you a hashtag? Yeah, just text me whatever whatever you want to use. It could be one of your sponsors. It could be something about you. It could be your son's name. It could be whatever, whatever you want to use. And then once you give it to me, once I get it, we'll put it up there and that'll be what everybody enters to win the giveaway. And we'll pick one of those randoms as we go here. Yeah. A little more technology, uh, technologically advanced since the last time you were on. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. All right. Don't say it until I get it up here. Oh, nope, I can't spell. Spell it right. All right, we're good. Yeah. All right, all right, guys. There it is. We're going to hit the go button to start collecting. Suzuki Outboards. He runs a Suzuki, uh, a flat black Suzuki, which I've always been a big fan of. So that's what it's going to take to win. Everybody start entering those hashtags Suzuki. we got 82 people in and we'll sit here and talk a little bit about fishing. Uh, there we go. Right. We um, hang on just a second. Since, since we're doing giveaways, uh, Uh-oh. I, gave, I gave away something last time. So hang on. Uh-oh. The giveaway just got turned up. <laughs> Uh-oh. Brandon gives away some good stuff. He made me look bad the last time he was on here. He's giving away some good stuff. So, yeah, Suzuki Outboards, make sure you're spelling it right. I can't. I'm an old hillbilly. I can't spell real well. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this. I want to get it a little bit better. I already got 21 entries. That's awesome. Nope, I don't like that. Hmm, okay. 
I guess that's the way it's got to be. Allows me to play around. See, I did see earlier a question. I think this is a good one. I'd like to know this myself. All right, guys, I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Remember, we do videos, full-length videos, every Sunday and every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Brand new Bass Geek videos every Sunday and Wednesday. Um, we also do, oh, my God, I don't know what he's got, but I literally heard stuff rattling around. He, he showed me up the last time. He, he gave a heck of a giveaway away the last this time. Is, uh... This is this is kind of an unboxing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow! So uh, I just, I'll, I'll let you finish, and then I'll do my. Unboxing. Well, so he's he's unboxing. <laughs> you guys better get in the giveaways. All I gotta say, we've already got thirty six entries. We've got eighty two people watching, but uh, I was just saying, remember Sunday and Wednesday at five o'clock, new Bass Geek videos come out. And we get uh, uh, this this live stream. If you miss it or your buddies miss it, they can always go out and download the podcast from anywhere that podcasts are, uh, you know, available. Uh, and if you, you can't find where, you can actually go to my website, BassGeekFishing.com. And I've got a podcast uh, link on there. You can go back and see all of the podcasts we've done this year because I've only been doing podcasts for one year. So this year is all it is. <laughs> now I'm going to let Brandon, uh, do I need to feel a little more. Or are you, you going to, you ready? No, 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 I'm good. We can, uh, you know, we can good. actually do one like big one or we can do multiple ones. It, it's totally up to you. Let's make it, let's make it easy. Let's just do one big one. Okay. And, okay. and so now guys, what I'll do, is whoever wins, you guys know to, to send me an email. I, you know, I'll put the email down in the comment section. You have to be on here to win. You, so you can't enter Suzuki Outboards and then run off to play poker or something. But, uh, but so we're going to do one big winner since we're closing out at the end of the night. We've, we've almost kept poor Brandon till, uh, for an hour and a half. And, uh, We'll go ahead and do this. Brandon, uh, you you ready to show them what you're going to send to them? Yeah, yeah. So, so we got uh, got an assortment of Yozuri baits here. Let's see if I can hold all these up. Let's see. The here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do something because I'm, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. We'll check out. I'll get the back up there. assortment of Yozuri baits. The glare is terrible. Guys, he, he won't even send me those. We're friends. Look, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, so you got the, <laughs> obviously, my favorite bait that I keep talking about is uh, the 3DB pencil. Yep. I, I do the same it, thing. It's like backwards. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we got, a, we got a small Rattling Vibe here and a crawl color. <laughs> we got the larger Rattling Vibe and the Sister Shad. And then we got this uh, medium uh, uh, crank, you know, in a crawl color, which nice. is obviously great in uh, East Tennessee. We're going to yeah. throw a couple of Yamamoto mermaids in there. Ooh. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> like the great flipping bait. Uh, it's also uh, a phenomenal jig trailer, that Yamamoto mermaid. And then last but not least, just got these in, literally just pulled them out of a box. Uh, it's the new Blackfish Sun Shirts. That is awesome. Yeah, these are these are super comfortable, great in warm weather. Um, you know, they they also have a hood on them, so if you don't like to wear, you know, a buff or anything, you just pull your mm -hmm. hood up. That's so awesome. We got, we got this one in blue that we're sending, and then we're also going to send this one in the uh, white and smoke. And then we'll throw in uh, we'll throw in a blackfish hat, the one I'm wearing right now. Golly! So yeah, all right. 
it's gonna, it's what, gonna be a good good giveaway. I'm uh, I'm gonna go ahead now. I would say, guys, I, I, let's let's make sure we clear this up. Those are probably already pre-sized, right? So, you uh, know. well, the the shirts are larges, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so if nothing else, if you can't wear them, give them to your wives. You know. They now, good. I mean, technically, you know, I could I could order some some size <laughs> shirts. I mean, if we want to. <laughs> Well, you know, that's up to you. I'm not going to put you on the spot for that. Yeah, I so, appreciate everything you do. Yeah, yeah. Black, Blackfish would definitely want the person to, to have their size. So so what, okay. what we'll do is, is they'll just send you this their size, and then I'll I'll send an email to Blackfish, okay. and, then, and then we'll get them the right size. That's awesome, man. That's why we love Brandon Card. You guys better make sure you go follow Brandon Card. As soon as you enter this giveaway, you better take your butts over there and follow Brand Card on Facebook, Instagram, on all the important spots. So, I appreciate it, man. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we got a quick question. We got 47. Now we got 84 people in here. Give us three more. Let's get to 50 and we'll draw. Three more entries and we'll draw. So here's a question about his Suzuki on his Vexus. Talk to us about performance speed what are you looking at on that yeah so so the vexus is uh the one i'm running is the vx21 it's actually mm -hmm. a 21 foot 11 inches wow it, it's a big old boat so you know obviously it's not going to go as fast as as you know some of the smaller boats on the market yeah. for me what uh what makes the vexus um the boat the boat that i love is that it's just the comfort it's the ride. It has the airway seats. It, it's by far the smoothest riding boat mm -hmm. that I've ever owned by far. And so, so I don't, I don't need to go fast boat anymore. Like I, I've been there. I've done that. I broke my <laughs> back. I broke my neck. And that, that's an exaggeration, but, but yeah, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've had plenty of obviously back pain, um, you know, with the rough riding boat. So uh, so, so the Vexus is not a go fast boat. Like I'll just, so if you want to go fast boat, you need to go buy a bullet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but mine, you know, I mean, it's, it's mid sixties. I mean, so it's not, it's not the fastest boat on tour, but you know, it's not overly slow either. I mean, mid sixties is, you know, definitely, uh, definitely good enough for me. Obviously if I have a, you know, a big partner in the boat or, or maybe I have too much tackle, you know, it goes a smidge slower than that. But yeah. What he's saying is when he's got me in the boat, I slow him, <laughs> I slow him way down. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just trying to, trying to be honest. I mean, you know, yeah. um, you know, I, I carry so much stuff. I mean, there ain't no telling. And see that that's the thing about a big boat is it don't matter whether you have a, 19 foot boat or whether you have a 22 foot boat you're going to fill it up like yeah. so so i put so much tack on this boat like it's unbelievable I, I carry twice as much stuff in this boat than i did you know probably my previous boat so uh so yeah i mean if you take all that out of the boat obviously it's going to go a lot faster oh yeah and i and i'll be the first to tell you and a big shout out to one of my uh and 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 i'm Still kind of keeping things under wraps, but hopefully things work out. But Watson's Marine, uh, my buddy Rex out there, he run a Vexus last year, and he flat told me that is and, – and Rex is like me. You know, he's got a little bit of round to him. You know, he's a, he's a bigger guy. And, uh, you know, I've been in a lot of boats, and, and as I've gotten older, you know, I just – turn 48 myself so you know i'm so old to fart dust at this point but uh you know <laughs> we uh the vexus he he flat told me he said it was the best riding boat he's ever been in so it he is. fished those last year it and is. there's a lot to be a lot to be said about that as like like brandon said brandon's on the water a ton and guys we all know you know how those uh, launches are in the bfls i couldn't imagine how they are in the elites and all that rough water and, and uh, the big water that those guys fish up north, you know. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm sure guys like Larry Nixon and Denny Brower would have loved to have had those uh, slower going, uh, more comfortable riding boats. Uh, yeah. there's a, those older guys got a lot of back surgeries <laughs> to, uh, you know, 
from from those boats that they run back in the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. So, all right, guys, we hit the 50 mark. Let's go ahead and draw the winner. Man, you're getting a prize pack today. I love it. Thank you, Brandon. You didn't have to do that, brother. Thank you very much. Winner, right. Kevin Altice. I hope I said your last name right. Like I said, I'm a hillbilly from Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia. <laughs> I can barely read, much less pronounce everything. All right. So, Kevin, awesome job. Congratulations. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my email in the comment section. Is this for my prize pack or your prize pack? That we we're gonna just do it all in one if that's all right with you. Okay. Yeah, that's that's, that's that just makes it trust me, it's just it's easier to do it that way. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know if you wanted to do them double or or what. Oh no, that's it, it's up to you, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Th this uh, is this is your show, brother. Me <laughs> me me and John uh Soka, we had a less than fun time doing this one time. So let's just, we just keep it real simple. Uh, Kevin, uh, let us know that you're still in here, brother. We're going to give you a few minutes. Guys, let me know if he's still in here. Uh, but uh, there's my email. Make sure you send me that email. Yep, there he is right there. All right, Kevin, that is awesome, man. You go ahead and send me that. I'll get you, uh, I'll get Brandon your address. Mm -hmm. He'll, of course, get it, get it out uh, to everybody that he needs to get it out to, and then he'll send you the stuff that he's already got in hand. And uh, that's awesome, man. Congratulations. Uh, I thought about going and entering this one myself, just to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, listen, we're going to wrap it up right here. I want to say thanks, Brandon, for being such a friend to the to the to the channel, to me. Uh, thanks for, you know, supporting your hometown. Uh, not the one in North Carolina yet. That's your wife's hometown. He still supports. <laughs> he still supports. So that's a great thing. He's an East Tennessee boy. He uh, still comes up here every single year, puts on a heck of a tournament. So if you guys have kids or if you are a kid in high school and college, make sure you get down there. Give that a shout out again, Brandon, about when you do that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's on Norse Lake, uh, Lonis Young Park. That's the ramp we use. And it's every, it's, sorry, it's the first Saturday of December every year. So uh, it's like, just, just go ahead and mark it in your calendars. But yeah, spread the word if you know any high school or college anglers. It's, it's open to any high school and college angler. So now, Brandon, go ahead and shout out where they can follow you, all your sponsors, everybody that makes it possible to do anything and everything that you do, brother. Yeah, it's just, you know, Brandon Card Fishing on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Twitter as well, uh, BrandonCardFishing.com. Uh, but yeah, you can uh, you can keep up with keep up with me on there. Obviously, um, you know, I don't, I don't have to list all my sponsors. I, I've got some some <laughs> awesome sponsors. You know, we're, we're giving away some great stuff here. Yeah. Um, you know, I couldn't do it without Suzuki, obviously. Uh, you know, Vexus has come on strong. Rock Outdoors, they're my local dealer here. If you guys are in the, the market for a boat here in the area, swing by. They're in Lexington, North Carolina. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't want to leave anybody out. But, yeah, just uh, – Appreciate you guys, uh, Hank. I, I appreciate the friendship and for uh, for having me back on here. Um, definitely uh, super impressed with y'all. You, you've grown leaps and bounds. Uh, Fifty thousand followers. That's pretty impressive, man. It's uh, you know, I, somebody said that to me the other day, and I said, you know, I, I said, you know, I, I grew up. Me and you've had this conversation. I grew up. I, I didn't really have anybody, you know, to teach me about fishing, to learn about fishing. And, uh, you know, uh, I just kind of went out there and beat water. And I just wanted to help, you know, guys like me be able to get out there and, and catch fish that really didn't have anybody to fish with, that didn't have, you know, an in with the community. Mm -hmm. And and that's, that's one of the great things about fishing, about the tournament uh, world and the fishing world is it, it really is a community. And it's a very welcoming community at that. 
So yeah, you might get some people when you, you know, you first jump in and they're looking at you funny because you probably are kind of funny looking, but you know, if you're like me, <laughs> but it don't take long, man, you know, you, you start meeting uh, some really great people. And uh, you know, I never thought, like I said, 50,000 is 45,000 more than I ever dreamed of having. I mean, really, if I would have had 5,000 doing this, I, it would have been, I would have been happy. And yeah. but to, to be here and to have some of the stuff that's going on over the past year and be able to make some of the friends like Brandon, uh, you know, John and Kyle and some of the companies, uh, you know, man, it's just more than I ever dreamed of because, you know, I always say I, I've, you know, I, I fished before I ever dreamed of entering a tournament. You know, to me, tournament fishing was what people, you know, who like, you know, big timers did. You know, I, I didn't even know about clubs and that sort of stuff. And, you know, so so for me, it's just uh, I, I fished before like this, you know, the tournament style fishing. I just love the puzzle of it and the breakdown of it. And, you know, if all this went away, if there's never a tournament, never a, a YouTube or an Instagram or anything like that, I was doing it before that. And this is just what I do. I do it after, yeah. you know, it's just what I love to do for no other reason than just doing it. And, yeah, uh, it's, just you know, the, it, it's the, it's the love of the game. <clears throat> it is. It is. Just, just having that fish pull on your line, man. That's, that's yeah. what we really do. <laughs> I tell you, man, I tell you, that's, we was talking about it earlier. You know, those, those spawn and smallmouth, man, there's nothing that fights more than a smallmouth on the bed when they are mad that you just stuck a hook in them and they are mad. <laughs> but anyway, guys, we appreciate you all. Thank you all for the 50,000. Thank you all for the kind words. Thank you, Brandon, for being a friend of the show and, and being, you know, uh, being on the first time and we're going to get you back on. Uh, I don't know. That's it. Anyway, love you guys. Uh, and as always, you guys rock. Thanks for being on tonight. Thank you. All. See you.